dedicated to um, to to teach on this, but it really was strong in my heart. I prayed about it and asked, God, are you sure you want me to do this? Uh, this one, but it was very strong in my heart today, so I know that we all need to hear it. I need to hear it. So um, I'm going to just talk a little bit today about uh, healing and mixing faith with works um, when it comes to healing um, and our responsibility and how we are uh, conducting our lives and living um, according to the word. I'm going to move this back a little bit. I feel like I can't see everybody. Um, okay, so uh, we know that we've been taught, um, anybody that's been here for any length of time, we've been taught that it is God's will for us to be healed um, and live healthy, prosperous lives. And um, so that's really what I wanted to talk about today was God's will for us to be healed. Uh, but but I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction. So uh, we know in uh, 3 John uh, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. And so we know there that it is God's will for us to be healed. It is God's will for us to prosper, um, just like it's God's will that everybody would be saved um, and that all will be prosper. We know you know, a part of that salvation package is prosperity and healing, and there's a lot that comes with that package. But just because that's God's perfect will doesn't mean that everybody walks in it. Um, not everybody gets saved, just like not everybody lives a prosperous life, and not everybody uh, receives their healing, um, even though it is, it's a free gift. It's a gift that God gives to us as his children uh, to have all those things. Um, so salvation, prosperity, and health are all a part of uh, part of God's perfect plan for mankind. Um, to be saved, we have to participate in that. And Dad has talked about this many times. To be saved, you have to open up your heart. You accept the free gift of salvation that God offers you. And you have to open up your mouth. So that requires our works, our action with our faith. And so we believe in our heart and we confess Jesus as Lord. So that takes our participation by doing that. Um, and then, you know, we are saved. Um, but it does take action on our end to be prosperous. We can't just sit back and say, okay, God, it's your will for me to be prosperous and drop it in my lap. We have to go out, put our hand to something. We know the Bible says whatever you put your hand to, he can then prosper it and you'll be blessed. We have to put action um, to our faith when it comes to prosperity, whether it's getting a job, whether it's asking God for divine ideas, you know, different avenues of financial increase and things like that to come to our life. Um, it takes our cooperation, it takes us talking right, it takes us acting right with our finances, um, you know, giving of our tithes and our offerings. And so we have to cooperate with God. So it's the same, it's the same thing with our health. And today, today I want to talk about specifically mixing our faith when it comes to the area of healing uh, with works to walk in wholeness. And so um, in James 2, 14 through 26, it talks about faith without works is dead. And I want to turn there really quick just so you can see it. So if you have your Bibles, who has their Bible today? On your phones. <laughs> I'm like not a phone person when it comes to my Bible. I like to have it. I'm still like very paper uh, and pencil kind of person. My notes are like, I think my dad's even more tech savvy. He types his out, and I still handwrite all mine down. Um, so James 2.14, if you could turn there, we'll read that. It's going to be a little more teachy today, not as much preachy. Sorry, Dad. I think he likes when I get more fired up, but we're going to teach. Okay, it says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed or lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself does not have, does not, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe in shudder. And so then you go down. I'm just going to drop down to verse, um, you know, it goes into, um, well, let's just go to verse 20. Well, never mind. We'll read the whole thing. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and so faith is completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. Verse 24, you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, also was not Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead so also faith apart from works is dead. So there's a combination, and Dad has said it many times, there's God's part and there's man's part. Uh, there's, it's a two-part, two it's a covenant. We, we have to do our part, he does his part. Um, and we leave his part up to him, but we have to be faithful to do our part. And so we know and we've been taught that we're a three-part being, where we have a spirit, we live in a body and we have a soul. So we are, we are a spirit. We live in a body and we have a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so with that, we can be excelling in one of those arenas and not excelling in another arena. And so, um, you know, you can have your physical body in great shape, but be totally a wreck spiritually. And then you're not going to be walking in divine health. But... And the same token, you can have your spirit man built up and be a strong man or woman of faith, but your physical body be a wreck, and you're not going to be able to walk out God's plan for your life. So we have to have both components working together. And so, um, you know, I was watching, I like to watch some, um, some of those shows, just like Biggest Loser and like different, different things. And there was this, one of the trainers was a CrossFit guy. And I did CrossFit for a little bit. It really wasn't my thing. It was not not really something I enjoyed. Um, but he did a lot of, like, heavy lifting. He's this big, jacked guy, and he did keto diet, and he was real strict on his diet. But he just talked so much junk, like, oh, man, like, that's going to give me a heart attack. And, you know, you hear him throughout this show, like, he's this big, buff guy, and, you know, oh, that almost, you know, gave me a heart attack or whatever. Well, sure enough, he actually had a heart attack. And he had his physical body was so intact, like he was real strict on his diet, and he was real jacked, like he worked out at the gym every day. You could tell real discipline in his body, but his mouth was just loose and running, you know, saying whatever he wanted. And so you have to have both. We have to be disciplined in both areas. So he had the physical part down, the body part down, but he did not have the spiritual part down, and I don't think he was even saved, but he didn't have any kind of spiritual depth or, you know, didn't know how to talk right. He had no knowledge of that. Um, and so we have to have both. And so 1 Timothy 4, 8, if you can all turn there. I'm going to be going to a lot of scriptures today. But 1 Timothy 4, 8, it says, <clears throat> I actually wrote it down in here. Physical training is good, but tr in the, the New Living Translation, if you want to put it up in the New Living Translation, physical training is good. But training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. And so I, I don't know if anybody else has used this scripture to get out of physical training, the physical aspect. I have personally said, oh, well, the Bible actually says physical training's like, okay, but I need to focus more on the word, which is true. Our primary focus should be the word in our spiritual man, but it says physical training is good. So this is telling us you need both. We need both of those components. Um, the King James Version says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. And so I've definitely, I don't know if anybody else has used it, but I've used this scripture to get out of going to the gym on more than one occasion and get out of eating as healthy as I should. Um, but it's not, this is not a free pass to miss working out or eating healthy or taking care of our physical bodies. It's bringing balance to that because you can get in a ditch on both sides of the road. You can get in the ditch on only caring about what you think about and neglecting your spirit man, or you can get in a ditch on only caring about your spirit man and excusing yourself from your part that you have to play in taking care of your natural body. And so um, this is not an excuse. Um, to get out of those things. It is to bring balance. But we should be 
taking care of our physical bodies. And that comes in the form of exercising and eating healthy and doing those things because we are stewards over this body and we have to take care of it because the only way that you can stay on this earth is if you take care of this body. Um, and so as a church, and I've said this before when I've talked about with ties and offerings, the world is coming in and they're looking to us as an example. And they're not just looking to us as an example on the spiritual aspect. They're looking to us as an example on how we live our daily lives, how we look, how we present ourselves. And so it should matter to us what presentation that we are representing um, and how we're representing God. And so one, of, one major area that the world looks at is our physical appearance. And if you look in 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says man sees the outward appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. Again, people take that scripture and they say, oh, well, God sees my heart. And he, he doesn't look at my outward appearance. That scripture is not an excuse to neglect what our outward appearance looks like. That scripture says man sees your outward appearance, but God sees your heart. So that that right there is telling you man's going to look at you and look at your outward appearance. How do you present yourself? Um, and so, again, we can't use that verse as an excuse to say, well, I don't care what I look like. And I've heard it before. I've used it before. Well, you know, I'm going to show up in my sweatpants. I don't care because, man, God sees my heart. Um, and that's just not, it's not proper. It's not right. Our appearance should matter to us. Um, Brother Copeland made this statement. He said, until you open your mouth, your body is speaking for you, and your appearance is speaking for you. So until you open your mouth and say something to somebody, your appearance is, is what's speaking for you. And so how you're dressed, how you, you know, the way that your body presents. And so what do we want our presentation to be saying? What do we want our testimony to be saying before we open our mouth to speak to somebody? And so when we take care of our bodies, we are better fit to be used by God. And that is true time and time again in Scripture. And again, I really hesitated ministering this because I'm in no way coming in and trying to say that I have it all together because I have worked out two times in the last month. Like, I just, I, it's, it's a struggle for me to get to the gym. I've been doing this thing with my dad every morning. We do, um, we've been doing celery juice. And so I bought him a juicer, bought myself a juicer, and I'm like, we're going to drink celery juice every morning, and it is not the best tasting, but it's really good for you. You drink it 16 ounces in the morning on an empty stomach, um, 30 minutes before you eat anything else, and it's very cleansing. Um, it actually curbs your taste buds. Like, I am a French fry fiend. Like, I love French fries. I will eat... It's my favorite food. I can just eat a plate of french fries. I'll get a salad and french fries. Like, that's my jam. So, but yesterday I was eating french fries, and I, Bubby checked me. We had gone to Splunkers. See, I need to work on my, on my eating habits as well. I'm preaching to myself just as much as, you know, everybody else. I need this. This is what God's dealing with me on. Um, so we go to Splunkers, and I got french fries, like the little cup. And so I finished mine, and he's eating his. So I reach over to grab more french fries he's like amber stop like stop he knew what i was ministering he's like stop eating my french fries and i was like oh you're right so it's absolutely me too um so anyways first corinthians six twenty tells us that our bodies are not our own if you want to turn there you can i'm going to kind of paraphrase but our bodies are not our own and we were bought with a price um jesus paid a high price for our bodies we don't own it but we are stewards over it and so Jesus paid for us to walk in health, but there is our part that we play. And so I will be held accountable, and you will be held accountable for what you put into your body and how you take care of your body. And so, and you know, maybe it's I need to cut out french fries. Maybe I need to cut out ice cream. You know, if you drink sodas all the time, pick one thing and say, I'm going to cut this out because I need to be more responsible for how I'm treating the body that's housing my spirit man because again if your body fails you you're gone there's nothing else you can do for god if your body's not intact and you can't physically be here on this earth that's it your spirit man's gone to heaven and you could have had a great strong spirit man 
but you can't be here without your body. So if you're not taking care of your body, you won't be here for very long. Um, 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Meaning that we aren't under the law. So, you know, they had, I think in the Jewish law, you couldn't eat pork, you couldn't eat all these different things. But we're not under that anymore. So really, you can eat and drink whatever you want to eat and drink. You're not under the law. But it's not going to bless your life. Number one, we know, and, and actually every time the Bible talks about drunkenness, it talks about gluttony as well. So, you know, really it's, it's equating the two together. Um, so we know it's not profitable, and we'll get up and say all day, you know, it's not profitable to be drunk. But we neglect the part about eating too much and not taking care of our bodies, and both are really, they go hand in hand. Um, so we're not under the law. So you can eat whatever you want to eat. You can drink whatever you want to drink, but it's not going to bless your life. It's not going to add value to your life. Um, how you handle your body does affect more people than you. And I've heard people say, uh, you know, well, you know, what I'm eating isn't affecting anybody. But that's not true. It's not true. What you eat affects more people than you. It affects your loved ones. It affects the people that you're called to minister to. And you can be, listen, you can be the skinniest person and be totally unhealthy. This is not a matter of weight. This is a matter of how you're taking care of your body. Um, Lisa Bevere talked about she had gone to, a, to get a physical, and she's tiny. Like, if you've ever seen her minister, she is tiny. And the doctor said, you're skinny fat. Like, you're skinny, but you are not healthy. And your cholesterol levels are through the root. Like, so it doesn't matter the outward appearance in the sense of your weight. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how you're treating your body, what you're putting into your body. Um, and so how you handle your body does affect more people. God has a plan for all of our lives. And he needs us to be healthy. And he needs us to be strong to run our race and finish our course. And so we get up and we confess and we say, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to do it in the joy of the Lord. Are you? Because if you don't. Get yourself disciplined and get your body under control. You will not finish your course, and you will not be able to run your race in joy and in strength. You may get to 80, and you may be feeble and not be able to do the things that God's called you to do. Um, you, need, you need to really get this. We, we have to, as a church, get this area in line because it's an area that I think we've neglected in a lot of ways, myself included. Um, and, you know, I got to thinking I would hate for God's plan for my life to be altered because I physically was not fit or able to do what he's called me to do. And I think about, you know, I was in Colorado at my uncle's house, and I'm walking up the stairs, and the altitude there is a little higher. And I'm, like, about to pass out because I can't breathe going up the stairs. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't breathe. And I thought about, you know, the men, these great men of faith in Deuteronomy chapter 34, we see Moses at 120 years old. He climbed the mountain and God showed him the promised land. I don't see any 120 year olds climbing a mountain, like at all. I, I can barely climb a mountain. Like I'm about to fall over. We were in Zion National Park and it's an eight mile hike up. And I'm like halfway through the hike, like where's the helicopter? I'm about to fake a sprained ankle and make them come airlift me out of here because <laughs> This is, this is hard. So you think about that. And if any of you have ever hiked or climbed or anything like that, he's 120 years old climbing a mountain. So I want to turn there really quick, Deuteronomy 34, just so you can see um, this man of faith, he didn't just rely on God for his body to be in health. God definitely has a part to play in that, but he had a part to play in no doubt. I think he climbed that mountain several times, but in 34 it says, then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, not the best at pronouncing the words, to the top of wherever, which is opposite of Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan. And so it says he went up to the mountain, and then if you drop down to verse 7, it says Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor un, un, unabated. Sorry, I like underlined it and crossed out the word. His vigor was unabated. So he, that means his eyesight was intact, his vigor, like he was able to climb that mountain. He did not die feeble and frail. At 120 years old, he was still able to be as strong as ever. 
um, one of this one of the passages says his eyesight was not dim and he was as strong as ever. He was able to climb that mountain just like he could have as a younger man. And so, and I thought about Jesus too. Jesus carrying that cross at 32, um, you know, when he had to take his cross after being beaten, um, beaten to death pretty much. He had to pick up a cross, a heavy cross. Those crosses were heavy and carry it. Uh, he could not have been out of shape and have done that. He had to be a strong man in shape to carry the cross and to fulfill the plan that God had for his life. What would have happened if he was not disciplined in his body? Would he have been able to carry the cross? And so, you know, I really thought about that. Um, you know, and I thought about when he was tempted in the wilderness and he was tempted with food in the wilderness if he didn't have discipline in that area, he would have failed that, that test. He wouldn't have been able to, you know, withstand the devil in that moment. So he was tempted with food. So that shows us that food is going to be a temptation to us. And just like Jesus overcame it, we can also overcome it. So all the things I'm talking about, the Holy Spirit will help us to, you know, to be able to withstand these things and to be able to make right choices and to say no to certain things and put ourselves into discipline. Um, in 1 Corinthians 9.24, Paul talks about how he disciplined his body. He kept it under control lest he be disqualified. And so Paul also had to be in really good shape to fulfill the plan that God had for his life. He was beaten, I think, three times what Jesus was beaten. He was in prison. And if your immune system is low and you're in those nasty prisons, he would have died right there. He had to have been in good shape. He had to have been taking care of his physical body to be able to walk out and do what God had planned for his life. He could have never have run his race with an out-of-control body. So he said, I discipline my body. I put it under. And so uh, that, that right there speaks volumes. You know, he had, he had to discipline his body. He's, he's the man that wrote two-thirds of the, Old Test, or the New Testament, and he himself had to put his body under, and it's a daily thing. And so some of us and most of us in our culture are genuinely, myself included, out of control when it comes to food and it comes to not spending the time. You know, getting up and just taking a 30-minute walk is really you can find time in your day for that or find time to do some kind of activity to keep ourselves in check. And so with that, we're inviting sickness and we're inviting disease. We're opening the door wide open for it when we're eating all the sugar that we're eating um, and we're eating the French fries. You know, I love my French fries, but it's fried in that grease. It's so bad for you. So, and I'm not saying you need to get off, you know, off tilt and there's some people that kind of take again to extreme you can be in this ditch or you can be in the other ditch so I'm not talking about taking it to extreme but I'm talking about being mindful of how you're treating your body and so it is God's will for us to be healed but he has to have something to work with if you're believing God for healing and you know and yes there's mercy and there's grace and he will be merciful to us but he'll start dealing with you on things that you need to maybe cut out of your life or things that you need to bring into balance and bring into check. And if we don't do those things, then when it comes time and we get sick or we have some kind of illness, you know, it, number one, it's going to be hard for our faith to work because we know God's been dealing with us on this. But he is so merciful and he's so gracious. But we do have to do our part. And so I would, per, I would rather do my part now and be mindful of the things I'm putting in my body, whether it's doing my celery juice in the morning or, you know, whatever that is. Um, I would rather be mindful now versus get to the point where now I'm in a situation that I've got to rely on the mercy of God to get me out of it uh, because of decisions that I've made. And so it starts with the decision. Faith involves action. Um, if you have sickness in your body and you're believing for God to heal you, that is great and that is right. And we should be believing God and standing on the word and confessing and, um, you know, having faith in God uh, to heal us. But we, it's not going to override how we're mishandling, what we're mishandling and what God's put us a steward over. And that goes for finances. It goes for our time. And it goes for our bodies. If, if we're mishandling what God has placed us a steward over, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to make it to our finish line, so we must discipline ourselves so that we can be useful to God. And again, 
you know, it's so important to remember that the Holy Spirit is our helper, and he's here to empower us and help us to be able to run our race. And so that, you know, I, in, I'm not talking about tithes and offerings right now, but it, it's, it's exactly the same. So some people struggle with giving their tithes and giving their offerings, but that's another thing the Holy Spirit will help you in. He'll help you in that. Um, and he's not left us to just fight the fight of faith because it's a fight on our own. He, he, will, he gave us his Holy Spirit to help us. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you guys today to take baby steps. If I'm not saying change your whole life today, but take baby steps in the right direction. Um, whether it's cutting out the sodas or cutting out the fries or cutting out different things, or maybe it's adding things like supplements and, um, you know, juicing or different healthy things to your life. Um, you know, there's a thing called intermittent fasting, and the Bible talks about fasting. And I don't think it's necessarily talking about just fasting for prayer, but fasting for your body. It's very healthy. Science has proven doing fasting is very healthy for your body. Um, so there's, you know, the intermittent fasting you can do and, um, you know, different things you can look up. We have so many resources um, offered to us on the Internet or different things. So I just want to encourage you guys in that. And you're not going to feel like doing it. It's not something you feel like doing. Just like a lot of times you don't feel like giving your tithe or your offering probably. You don't feel like coming to church necessarily. You don't feel like serving. But it's things that we have to put our body under like Paul talked about. Um, and so th this is just one area, putting our body under. And so uh, Brother Copeland, I was listening to him preach this week about um, just about living a healthy lifestyle. He's really big on that. He's like 80, I think he's 87, and he can do like a three-minute plank. I don't know if you know what a plank is, but I can't do a one-minute plank. So he's really big on, you know, living healthy and um treating your body well but he was talking about you know food is what costs mankind at the beginning at with adam and eve they eve didn't have the discipline to say no to that that fruit that she was told not to eat she was told not to eat it and she she didn't have the discipline she took it she wanted it you know there's other things that play there i think pride and different things like that but it was ultimately it was food that cost mankind at the beginning and so we have to discipline ourselves, discipline our flesh, so that we can all run our races and finish our course um, and do it in joy and strength. And so, you know, we all, God has a plan for all of our lives. What you do will impact people around you, impacts your family, impacts your loved ones. And so I just want to encourage you guys in that today, um, you know, just to, just to really ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Holy Spirit, help me. Show me the areas that I need to work on. Um, show me the areas that I maybe need to cut out or maybe I need to add to, uh, to my life to help me to be able to be a blessing and to be able to run my race um, in joy and strength. And so that is all I have for you. Super early. But, um, but that is all I have.